Intravenous fluids or IV fluids are administered directly into the bloodstream through the vein to deliver medications, nutrients, electrolytes, fluids to patients that cannot take them orally or when they need an urgent correction of electrolytes and fluid imbalance. In today's video, I am going to be discussing IV fluids, talking about the indications, the various types of IV fluids, as well as nursing responsibilities when caring for a patient undergoing IV administration. Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're here for the first time, hi, my name is Bosari Imoliayo. I am a Nigerian registered nurse and registered midwife and I'm also a registered nurse in United Kingdom. On this channel, I talk about nursing and healthcare. So if you're interested in content like that, do click on the subscribe button to join the YouTube family and also on the bell icon so you don't miss out when I drop another amazing video. I already mentioned what IV fluids are in the introductory section of the video, so I'm just going to go straight into the indications. There are various reasons in which a person would have to take IV fluids. Common examples are dehydration, either from loss of fluid through vomiting or diarrhea. A patient would also be placed on IV fluids if there is an electrolyte imbalance. IV fluids are used to maintain hydration during surgeries, during operations. And when you want to administer medications, some medications come in IV format or IV forms that you have to pass it through the vein directly as well as when you want to administer blood products or during blood transfusion so these are some of the indications of iv fluids there are different types of iv fluids but they can all be broadly classified under two major headings which are the crystalloids and the colloids all other forms of iv fluids can be classified under these two headings which we will start talking about now Crystalloids are IV fluids that have very, very small molecules and they can pass through the cell membrane. There are three major types of crystalloid IV fluids and they are classified based on their osmolarity when you compare their own osmolarity to the osmolarity of the blood plasma. So you have the isotonic, the hypotonic, and the hypertonic fluid. The isotonic solutions have similar or the same osmolarity with the blood plasma osmolarity. So they are used to expand extracellular fluid volume and replace electrolyte loss from either dehydration or blood loss. So the common examples of isotonic solutions includes your normal saline, which is 0.9% normal um, sodium chloride, as well as your ringer lactate and dextrose solution. The next type of crystalloid IV fluids are the hypotonic solution. And from the word hypo, which means low, it means that they have lower osmolarity when compared with the osmolarity of the blood plasma. And common examples of hypotonic solutions include half normal saline or half strain normal saline. That's 0.45% normal saline, as well as 0.33% normal saline. These hypotonic solutions are used to rehydrate cells and provide free water. The next type of crystalloids are the hypertonic solutions. And from the word hyper, it means that they have higher osmolarity when compared to the osmolarity of the blood plasma. Common examples of hypertonic solution includes 3% or 5% saline and dextrose solution. These hypertonic solutions are used to expand intracellular volume, treat hyponatremia, or provide nutritional supports. Now let's talk about the colloid class of IV fluids. Colloids are IV fluids that have very large molecules and they stay in the intravascular space. They don't pass through the cell membranes. And, and they are used in severe cases of hypovolemia or shock. Common examples of colloid IV fluids include albumin and ether starch or hydroxyl starch. Now let's talk about your nursing responsibilities when you're caring for a patient that is to undergo IV fluid administration. The first thing is your assessment. You need to know if this person's medical history has anything that is contradictory to the IV fluid you're about to administer or the IV medication you are about to administer. Take for example, if you're going to be administering blood products, like you're going to be giving the person blood, then definitely you have to be sure that the blood type that you're about to administer to the patient is compatible with the patient's blood type so that the person doesn't come out 
with a blood transfusion reaction and you could actually lose the patient the next thing is observation or monitoring when a patient is on iv fluid it's important that you keep monitoring the vital signs of the patient to know if the patient is having an adverse reaction to the iv fluids or iv medications that you are administering to the patient you would also want to open an input and output chart for that patient because you want to ensure that there is a balance in the amount of fluid that you are giving the patient and what the patient is excreting so that you don't have the patient retaining a lot of fluid and even coming down with edema you also want to know if the patient is excreting a lot of fluid so that the person doesn't become dehydrated in the process another thing you need to do is to educate the patient and the people around the patient about the iv administration so that they just don't go to the iv fluids and start clipping or touching any of the things that you have set up because you need to let them know that it's supposed to flow at a certain rate it's supposed to go over a period uh, a certain period of time so that they don't think that it's too slow or it's too fast or they just want to get the IV fluids done and just to go home. Documentation is also very important because of continuity of care. Take for example, a patient is supposed to take three different types of IV fluids and they are supposed to be taken concurrently. If you've only started two and you've not documented it and the nurse that comes to take over from you doesn't see a documentation, the person could eventually start again, leaving out the third one and that becomes like a medication error because obviously that was not what was prescribed and that is not what the patient needs documentation is very important for continuity of care also need to consistently examine the iv line side that is where the cannula was inserted especially to look out for things like phlebitis or infection around that area so these are some of the major things that you need to know about iv fields as a student nurse if you want to see more of my videos you can click on this playlist here and i'll see you next one bye